Just should we say good morning? We just pretend. So we'll say hi and then it'll go straight into yellow. Mm-hmm. What's it called again? Hudson? It's Hudson Listening Records Club. Listening Club and your album's called Receiver. And we are... The right. Ryan Gans sisters. Oh, very well pronounced, Andy. Shall I do that? Do you want to do yeah. that? Yeah. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Hudson Records Listening Club. Um, we're the Rangan Sisters, and we are delighted to be listening with you to our brand new album, Receiver. Let's start with the first track, I think. Oh, Andy Bell's here as well. <laughs> Here's the album. Those are the kids again that were on oh, your yeah. album. Making an appearance. Same kids. The little uh, the chatter and the, the uh, schoolyard joy. So, sort of secretly recorded across the way in Sheffield. They all received a bit of PRS, right? Steady flow yeah, absolutely. I like that harmonic, it's like a squeaky gate. <laughs> of the window sill they sit on The yellow of the flower We pass the window Can't be late for school now And the rain it's coming thicker In little lines of arrows In the darkest winter tracks that we had for the album, isn't it? Yeah. And like a lot of the tracks on this album, we've kind of gone for a textural thing with the instrumentation, especially the fiddles. I feel like we're quite inspired by like Estonian, Estonian uh, lobby, looks like Estonian. Mario Newt and yeah. different players on these like... I think of my part in this song as a percussion part on the viola. Beyond the curtain Makes me think of Can't be late for school Yeah, atmospheric And the way you write the lyrics The flowers The yellow of the flowers This is a cool bit coming in with the With the whistle The yellow of the flowers Yeah, again, like going for a textural thing, kind of almost more yeah. than a melodic thing. That's a few different bits, isn't it? Layered up and made into like yeah. a little loop. We made it like a little synthy loop thing. Yeah. Hard to tell what it actually is. And... Just like three phrases that yeah. are just repeated over and over and over, and then you just like pile them on top of each other. Yeah. There's some kind of pocket piano or nod or some kind of synthy bass thing on there as well, aren't there? Mm. Somewhere. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's nice to have that in the first track, this introduction, because it's that's the sound that we haven't had on our previous albums, like these low-end synth sounds. So it's nice in the first track that it begins fiddles, voices, that's familiar, and then you hear yeah. this like low end, and it's like this is a new sound now. This is and a new the high end coming out, you know the oh yeah, this bit. I don't even know. Can't even remember what that is. I remember Andy. It was pocket piano. Through some pedal. Um, no, to, like we were just riding the volume of it like that. Ah, uh, yeah. Do you remember? Yeah, that's yeah. For last week's listening club listeners, there was quite a lot of that on Jenny's album as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's the main folk instrument now, I think, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, standard. Yeah. <laughs> and then, lastly, segues into track two. This is a track called Östbjöka, and it's our setting of an old Swedish fiddle tune. And this beginning, actually, is is actually the, cent- the centre of this sound, is the demo recording we made originally, I think, on my phone. Yeah. Like, really lo-fi, and we just kept it in the end, didn't we? Because actually, it was this, like, going from something quite metallic and small and opening out was what we were sort of wanting. Yeah, yeah. Sounds great, that. Yeah. Was well, so it that actually the intro was, was I think the original? Yeah, it was from the phone, yeah. 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 I forgot about that. Yeah. And I love that because I think a lot of this album we've been more adventurous about fiddle sounds. And it's like a rejection of the set of the idea that there can be one good one. Mm. You know, and actually like, you know, sometimes the sound you get on your phone is is the one you want for mm. something, you know. I don't know, it's like that's the same with I think with all kind of music. All kind of production and stuff, there's all sorts of different whether it's on a wax cylinder or a phone or a or a cassette or whatever. Yeah. It's not none of them are right. Yeah, the they're all is yours. Or none yeah. of them are wrong, they're all right. You know? yeah. yeah. It could be quite nice to be shot like some of our favourite albums that we like listening to. Like sometimes it's like, wow, that's a shocking fiddle sound. You kinda yeah. like it and it like stuns you into listening. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's not it's not too easy to listen to, you know. It's like, that can be good. The brass Just, fiddle. Actually, there yeah. are a few shocking fiddles. Out, but yeah, we'll, we'll leave that for a different listening club. Yeah, yeah. Not everybody has to sound like yeah, Mad Yeah, exactly. But sometimes, it, sometimes that can be what you want to go for. So. Mind you, it, if you play stuff, yeah, for like Norwegian folk musicians, that you know they can be quite easily shocked. Although, the Shawstad brothers, well, yeah, exactly. are, they were a big influence for this, album, for this track, their fiddle sounds, but they're not typical, they're not typical squeaky clean, you know, scandy type musicians, are they? they're a bit different. And French type musicians, they're all over the rustic, like, let's make this sound like, it literally was, was recorded in this like ruined barn and some of them are actually are recorded quite a lot of track recording in like barns yeah <laughs> do you think Andy that's a stylistic like trend as well maybe that like I don't know when in the 90s I feel like all the folk mu- music we listened to all the Scottish fiddle bands that we loved mm. there was this like s- strong sense of like one fiddle sound that was yeah, just yeah, good definitely. I mean, and now I think... it's like quite different yeah that's interesting, even, there's, there's even, I think it, I think it's quite a scene thing, like nationally, like if you're, I don't know, on the Scottish scene or the Irish scene or whatever, it tends to go into phases with that and certain sounds, yeah, yeah. Like, and there's even certain plugins, computer yeah. mix plugins that I know are well used on certain scenes at certain times. I guess yeah. that's just a, a thing, a phase that people go yeah. through, you know. And we're all listening to each other, so it kind of, you know, things yeah. move in like little trends, doesn't it? Yeah. And we just talked over that beautiful tune, but, you know, you can find it. <laughs> Listen to it again. Listen to it again without, yeah. Do you want to... This is Anna's song, Next Salt of the Earth. Want to say anything about it? Sharing silver spoons From grain 
to fly to make the baby come and send our loved ones on swaddling a gift brought by the swelling It's such a good banjo part, isn't it? Manoranga. There's something so stark about it. I love and it. I love this little tune. It's actually influenced by a French rondo, funnily enough. Is it? It which, sounds which so thought, scandy to me. Yeah. I sort of wrote a third part to it. No, I wrote a first part. When I play the instruments. Stitches then were torn. Yeah, it's interesting this song plays. The first tear stained the moon. And nice. I just, so many versions of the lyrics. Like. The arcs are bowing but, to the torrid. Mm. Quite happy that it became. I feel like we just sort of sat and vibed it mostly. isn't really in their content but more in their feeling and texture and like mm. also the process by which we made them that kind of, and, and calling our album receiver in kind of a reflection of that process of like how we understand what we do as composers basically that actually a lot of it is a lot of the creative act is um about paying attention to what is actually coming to you mm. And that, and so receiving being kind of part of this very, very active creative process. So that actually is the thread that we think about in terms of this collection of music. Mm. Because actually it was really, when you look at we've got the track 
I keep looking down because I'm looking at the back of the notes here. Yeah. Um, when you when you think about these, you know, that's a couple of years really of like quite slow, mm. um, you know, over different points gathering together or working quite quite um, focused for a short amounts of time and then you know going off and doing other projects and so. So in a way, it's it's almost like what what was familiar to us at, at all those disparate points was this sense of um, giving all of those tracks their own sort of gestation period or their own sort of time to really like become what they wanted to be. And I don't know if you remember Andy, like when we got to the studio because we had in 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 like um, contrast to that process, we had quite an intense process to record it, didn't we? We had mm. eight days. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think we went. It's almost like we sort of brought in all of the notes and all of the possible things for each track yeah. and then also looked what we had in the studio. You know, there was Hammond organs and there was synths and there was different spaces we could use. We were quite ready, though. More, yeah, yeah, yeah. More ready. I think we were really ready, but but also ready to, like, ready to carry on receiving the possibilities for each yeah, track, yeah, I yeah. think. Yeah, it felt um, like there was, like, quite a... I guess that, that was an instrument and sort of additional textures there's like a core of you two playing yeah. playing the things you've you've worked up and you did in the mm. you went on a couple of residencies didn't you and stuff to, yeah. to yeah. figure that out and then and then it was yeah about putting that down onto yeah and i think tape. we treated maybe a little bit differently from our previous albums where like the kind of core sound of the like the raw kind of core sound of us in a room was like the focus mm. i feel like for this album each we kind of went for each track like its own painting yeah. almost that's how yeah. i kind of remember it you know oh we're in this you know so for example sort of the earth okay vibe. we're in this vibe now yeah so what else is it asking for and we didn't really worry too much about whether that would stick out or be different from the rest of the mm. tracks i think that's something i like... probably worried about probably more um, yeah you know oh i'm not worried about but you know like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, whether it was gonna hold yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah and i think we held that together with some of the some of the instrument, some of the extra instrumentation, and some yeah. of the kind of sound effecty kind of, or like you know, found sounds and stuff like that. Yeah, um, yeah. Sharing know. the moves of the album, exactly. Yeah, in the same ones, like scattering them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This track's keeping it real, though, isn't it? Yeah. Just two banjos. Just two Just banjos. Nice, simple banjo tune. Yeah. Nylon banjo though as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, Anna's Barry. playing. You've, you're I'm playing, playing the You're playing Barry, are you? I think so. Yeah. And I'm playing um, Live. <laughs> 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 live became officially my banjo yesterday. Oh yeah, that's right. The ball. It was it. the one you borrowed for the album, but you've bought it. Uh, yes, cool. it was still in the shop at this point. But I've officially purchased it yesterday. I think. But it might change. It's so funny, like, um. Sorry, I, I, I didn't know. Were you going to get to some other names for Clive? Has he got a middle name or anything? No. Um, I think Clive's good. I think Clive's Clive, good. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was just thinking, it's so funny because. I can't even remember when I finished mixing this, but I haven't I haven't really listened to it since. Uh, and then it's funny thinking of you know, feel quite used to it because we recorded like a year ago now, I guess. Yeah, it was, yeah exactly. So, we yeah. finished end of September last year, I think. And I don't yeah. think I've listened to it that because I mixed it pretty quick afterwards, I think. Mm, Maybe yeah. we added a couple of little things, but it was done by Christmas last year, wasn't it? And well, we were yeah. going to release it in the summer, and then yeah. the whole yeah. COVID thing kind of changed our, yeah. our tax. So that's probably why you were probably like, we rushed you know, you rushing and then it's <laughs> not even <laughs> out yet. So. It's worth, worth badgering me, yeah. But, oh, yeah, um, no. Always <laughs> worth badgering me. Uh, yeah, it's nice to think people are going to hear this now. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> It is out now, though, isn't it? Because we are. It is out now, yes. Twenty fifth. Absolutely, yeah. 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 Do you know what? As well, Andy, on that, like, it feels especially nice this year. You know, we've been sharing various things through the weird lockdown, lockdowns periods, but like to be able to share this album, which was not made 
you know, was really made like in a kind of different world. Yeah. Um, and really kind of feels a very rich whole offering that we spent a lot of time on and didn't really, you know, the release of it has been compromised, but the making of it was not, you know, so that feels really nice to be sending that out to people, you know, but like, yeah. here's, a, here's a thing we're really proud of. And it, not something we made in lockdown. Well, yeah, yeah. And, and, and like, you know, lots of things have to be made now in lockdown, but yeah. it just feels nice that this is from a different time. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I think that track is like a little sorbet in preparation for the next I one. I think really. so. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A palate cleanser. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, this one's a bit. The robot. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, I, I, got oh. A, I got a nickname when I was recording my part for this. The robot. <laughs> I could still remember you. Just like. I had to go into like a. Because it's cross gams. rhythm. Yeah. <laughs> It's like a lot of maths going on, and I'm not very good at maths. Okay, <laughs> I have to like zone everything out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just be like, you got quite stressed. Yeah, I did get. You have to do it so many times. Yeah. Like, no, you, you, me and you, you had to do this robot thing. Yeah. I think you did it all in. together and then there was, some, there was an extra yeah. one that you couldn't play that we put on. But that was yeah. pretty much live, wasn't it? Oh, love this harmony. That's your... It's so ugly. Yeah, ugly yeah. harmony, yeah. I love it. It's also really... But it resolves. Synchro bits. on an old French dance tune. You know, it's a new a new composition of Anna's, but it's the form is the dance tune. But then we kind of take it to, it's like, I don't know, a, obvious to us is it's is this kind of trance-like um, element of this kind of music. You know, really old music, but it seems to really foreshadow a lot of trance music for us. You know, and the fact that you can just stay in these very circular patterns for a long time feels very good. And it gradually is changing. So, gradually it's become this... taking phrases out and then changing them a little bit. It's Playing like that twice and three times. And quite a minimalist Going section. down a lot. And repeating just that. And then it just goes into a it's really simple chord changes. gets lost but it has to land but when we play this live it, we can't wave from each other at all it's like very yeah. very yeah, yeah. like locked in isn't it yeah it's so hard because you can get so lost in it but count like but also you've got because it's going from da -da -ya, da -da -ya, and then da -da -ya, the accent is changing it's cool when that chord so, comes in there one because the accents are all changing so the one it's not one two three anymore it's like the, it's like one 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 you don't know where the one is anymore so <laughs> it's evolved quite a bit since we've done it live a few times as well yeah yeah i love it when the tune comes back in yeah but it's one of those where you've got to count because we've got to be in at the same time exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a bit of a stress. Here's another palette cleanser. Palette <laughs> cleanser. <laughs> Anna's flabuta. We really wanted on this album because Anna plays flabuta alongside the tuntun and they're kind of they are an instrument together. But we wanted a little moment for the flabuta to shine on this. Album. It shines, doesn't it? it does shine. Definitely got a shiny tumble. Yeah. Was the I sheep think. ever found? 
Um, with sleep, Andy. Oh, oh is it sleep? <laughs> I've not got my glasses on. I was like, it's a lost sleep. It's a lost sheep. <laughs> a lost sleep. <laughs> a lost this sleep. Lament for lost sleep. Um, it just comes after in the sleep ever found? You know, it's like, <laughs> was sleep ever found? Yeah, but then lockdown happened and lost it again. <laughs> It's like a, yeah, it's, it's the post insomnia, like, mm. when you're like, going around, walking around, sort of, you haven't had any sleep, and you're like, a bit faded. It's not typical of the flabuta to play something so like soothing. Mm. Um, I don't think you play tuntun or flabuta in any kind of traditional way. Do you? I know. I just play them how I like, mm-hmm. basically, which is fine. Isn't it? I don't yeah. even tune it in the right traditional. Well, in very different ways. So. This was hard to not. I was worried that this would just sound like a gift shop um, <laughs> Celtic um, mist we, we were trying hard not to we were like Andy can you just m- make this not sound like Celtic mist please <laughs> and it kind of it's got a special timbre though that is a bit yeah. different I think it, it, I think it's, I think it works yeah, it viola and flabuta they just work really nice together yeah. this is coming out of that as well similar energy this is I think I don't know about you it's one of our fa- well, it's one of my favourite tracks in the album because mm. um, very soon you'll yeah. you'll hear the first the first um, notes of Rachel Cohen on sax mm. who really like takes the music somewhere else I think there she is there she is so Rachel plays on Hannah Reed's uh, last solo album too. Yeah, is that's where we kind of where the link encountered came from. her. Yeah, yeah, we went to see Hannah in London, and Rachel joined her on a few things. And yeah. like saxophone is not usually an instrument we we think let's obviously get a no, sax on our album. It was but here, Rachel's her... playing and her 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 way of like weaving around the yeah. melody was so amazing, and her like specific sound just seemed right. I just went straight up to her. I was like, "Can I have your card, please?" Card. Yeah. Because <laughs> anyone has cards anymore, but yeah. <laughs> oh, she did. Can I have your QR one. code, please? No, actually, actually, <laughs> actually, I just said, can we be friends on Facebook? Yeah. Or it's kind of an album. And, yeah. And she but, gave you a fake, fake email address. And then <laughs> yeah. and I, I had to hand her down for a couple of years after that. By Hannah. <laughs> that was not true. That's not true. She's a gorgeous, gorgeous person. Came to see us uh, the other day in London. Oh, you just missed your favourite bit. No, I didn't. That's oh, favourite bit. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I love that bit. How she dances around. That's, That's nice. a good bit. It's not my favourite bit though. It's okay. coming up. All right. It links nicely to your solo album as well, Rowan. Just because oh, yeah, the bass, bass clarinet, I know it's two different instruments, but texturally yeah. the bass clarinet and the sax really. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. And isn't it interesting in this how the fiddle, viola, and sax they just seem closer in sound on this track than they usually are? Mm. It's something that I think it's Rachel's playing into the kind of shape of the strings or something. I don't know. Yeah. I think it works really well if, if you get that kind of instrumentation working together. There's, a, there's an album that um, that Swedish Cryer, is it Cryer? The singing quartet yeah. that have done. And yeah. there's, there's some, I don't like all the album, but there's some bits with the saxophone and the vocals that just yeah. sit. Daniel amazing. and Anne Reed as well. It's classic combo, fiddle and saxophone. Sure, yeah. Favorite, I think. Mm. That's my favourite mm. bit on the 
Yeah. And I love this tumbler as well, this, this tune, because it's all in third position, really. So it's different. Yeah, the sound it sounds different, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. When I play it, I can hear Rachel now, even if she's there, like, mm. when it's coming. And how we recorded this, like, me and Anna recorded this together in Wales with Andy. Rachel came to do a session in Sheffield after. Mm. And you were, you'd gone back to France already, hadn't you? Yeah. I'd gone back, yeah. So I had the pleasure of just sitting in this room, and Rachel just had multiple plays through, and honestly, every take she did was perfect. It was beautiful. And it was, a, it was actually a bit of a nightmare to pick one. You know, but just she got the, she just got the atmosphere of it. That was technically an error. <laughs> I scored. What? I scored it out, and I just played. I just did a variation on the B part. Oh, we'll have to. Which I. Should we ask people? To if anybody the in the tune book, you know, <laughs> asks me about that, well, it's just yeah. How it I was. like the end of that one as well. I think the, the end really nice. I don't know why. Because it was a few tapes, really well. wasn't it? I just it's just the way it, it just happens is just really nice. It was a morning, I think, and I just had to like try it a few times, and we just picked the best vibe. Yeah, one, didn't we? This is a nice one. What's the view? Again, like just a different texture in it. Though. Yeah. We've always done quite a lot of pizzicato. In like even since our first album you know Glad Gold Hearts which we did with Andy uh, Red and Roses <laughs> probably a long time ago <laughs> long, quite a long time ago yeah but still <laughs> we've always got some sort of pits feature on our albums like some sort of safari or something it makes me think of like ro rolling like <laughs> Simba <laughs> it makes me think of that I don't know. and we're singing an, uh, a line line of a song in Occitan um, it's almost like a fragment of a song that you know isn't it but again, like what we said before, you know, Barry White hair, just... Rowan. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have quite a low voice. I don't think you've ever managed to do that again. Though. I don't think I have. I have to be completely relaxed. To get that though. <laughs> love doing this live like our arrangement of it basically is when I open my eyes at some point after that we finish <laughs> because it's just like, it's like I really like get into it you open your eyes and half the room's empty everyone yeah it's like oh <laughs> gigs over they've gone bell tree bell tree oh yeah bell tree I thought that was the alarm that. going off in the house then. <laughs> I love uh, how yeah. um, how that comes in. Like it is quite doorbelly, wind chime. It's a cool. Notes. It's a really great bell tree that. Mm -hmm. That was just hanging in the space, wasn't it? Yeah, just yeah. just is in the studio. Yeah. We wanted quite a lot of bells. There were a lot of. Um... Do you want to say something small about Urien before we launch in? Oh, Urien, probably yeah. We're just um... gonna go for that one again, Andy. I was just saying that even in Orient, like, I don't know, I just kept thinking about, I mean, we've obviously got After the Bell Rang, which is coming up in a bit, but we've got bells yeah. kind of scattered uh, around, around the album. album. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, Orient, um, this one's great because it starts off with uh, the the archive recording from 1935 um, of a Norwegian player, Jürgen Schunstall, and... Uh, 
this record this is a version our version of of his recording from 1935 so we start with the actual recording of him which I've listened to like obsessively over the last three years so this was another slow 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 burner thing for us slowly evolved thing yeah really and like for you especially because Anna was you know Anna dissected and worked with this recording and then almost like brought a version to me that then we could make to our version Mm. so actually the patience that it's taken for you is many different like stages uh and it could never be it's like his recording is so insane that nothing could ever be it could never not even him could try it not even he could try and replicate it there's so much going on and every time I listen to it I've listened to it so many times over three years and every time I listen to it still I hear other things I've never heard before in his playing it's so complex and this is just one guy so yeah absolute legend so this was it was kind of big pressure There's no other way we could have made this track. This is just, we just had to do it, I don't know, a handful of times and be in the zone and just, you know. First take, get it, isn't it? I think, I'm pretty sure it was the first take, yeah. <laughs> was it? I mean, I, mean, I, don't know, I, don't know. I can't remember how many takes it did. <laughs> I put it, we only have I a thought few we did in, it. in us. I thought <laughs> we did it a couple of times, like over a couple of days. Did we not do it a couple of times and then... Maybe. Just to get this... different vibes, you know, I thought. Yeah. Maybe. So technically difficult, it's like... Like what you're doing is very technical. Playing... And I just basically... I don't usually play in like sixth, fifth and seventh position, but yeah. Most folkies don't, mate. I know. I don't know why I just, I just make it so difficult for myself. And it, it kind of kills... Hand. It's like so energy consuming. I can only play it about three times maximum per day. I love it. And in gigs, it's like so scary. It's like, am I gonna get that note right? But you have to commit so much to that note that you're like, you just have to believe. I believe Jurgen's watching down on me. Yeah. I have to believe that. The bell bit. Yeah. I love that bit. It has like church bells. For me, this is just like being on a train. It's like you just get on at the beginning and then it's just full, blurry windowed pelt to the end. Can't get off this bit, especially. Yeah, there's no getting off. I would do that differently. Oh. Be so cool. tight on that ending. I mean, it's just shameless that that track. It's just like we're just there's nothing subtle about it because there's nothing <laughs> subtle about him. The, the recording that's based on it's like it's yeah. just so like soul bearing. Come on, you know, yes, exactly soul bearing. Oh, this is like my fave, I think, and a lot of people's faves. The land looks wider. This has been a very they say successful track. We'll be fine. Seems to land with people live very strongly, mm. yeah. and the, the video that came out as well. After the bell rang. 
I mean, it's original. Tun Tun played like a... Yeah, that slide that Anna does is a, is a very untraditional way of playing your instrument, isn't it? Yeah. I heard the ripple. So for those that are listening or watching that don't know what that instrument is, do you want to yeah. tell them what it is? Yeah. So it's, it's pretty weird. It's a Pyrenean stringed drum, so it's big, like, somebody recently described it as a cupboard. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it looks like a cupboard. It's a box and it's got big, fat gut strings, so it's like a medieval uh, bass that you hit with a stick. It's medieval bass, that's a good medieval bass. Medieval bass that you hit with a stick. We well, I'm hitting it and slide. No one can. There, I'm just hitting no it. Did it have sympathetic strings as well? So it's got it's got ten gut strings and it's got six sympathetics that yeah. resonate underneath. No one can. No one can. Um, usually, it's got three different no notes, but you can. I use different tunings on it. And you block them off when you want to hit a certain. Yeah. Yeah. So it's quite a hefty. Thing and it's got brass rings that make a zinging sound, like a buzzing. So that's why it's the stars hear it buzzing. And we'll sing your name on But it's the whole thing through the song I'm playing the whole the same thing. Wing on wing. It's a chance and bending. Yeah. And my arm after five minutes of that. I've got like muscles from that. Any muscles? It's quite hard. It's really quite hard to do. <laughs> Keep it the same. After the battle is oh. Quite apocalyptic this song. Oh, love's young dog. There's Rachel Cohen as well, like providing yeah. this kind of like I don't know the cloud coverage. It's just kind of really atmospheric around the edges. It's yeah. gorgeous. You make the stars renew. We can't see everything from up here. No one can. No one can. No one can. No one can. We can't see everything from up here. No one can. So there's a couple more like pop moments on this no album, isn't there? Like just choruses. Like, I, I've never really written choruses before. From up here. No one can. No one can. No, not really. No one can. I just want to avoid like the folkies singing along. Exactly, I just don't want anyone ever to sing along. <laughs> I thought Salt of the Earth might get a few folkies like in their seats. Oh, I'll have to find out next year, won't we? Yeah, maybe <laughs> e ever again. Look how pink the sky is turned. Yeah, we um, commissioned our favourite video maker in Bristol, Sam Wistanoff, um, to make two two videos for two songs off a new album. So after the bell rang, this song he's made into a gorgeous part illustrated video, and then he also has done um, a really stunning thing with yeah, the yellow of the flowers, the first track of the album. And both of those videos were made during lockdown. So me and Anna kind of filmed ourselves, sent that to Sam, and it's like a collaged kind of. Yeah, it's really cool what he's done, and also the fact that both videos look so different, mm. despite mm. that being our our kind of yeah. process. It's very cool, so check those out. So this oh. tune is an interesting one because it we've been playing this in our live sets for a few years um, as a kind of outro to an, a much older song from our second album, um, Already Home. Kind of. I don't know, it kind of grew out of out of one of those songs and kind of stayed in our life set. But then we just, yeah, I don't know, we've always really enjoyed it and really felt like, again, it has this like circular shape for us, like, a, mm. like something we can really, really just get kind of mesmerised with and make the small changes that just shift the colour as the tune goes around. So we kind of wanted to... Small changes. Yeah. And build up, small yeah. build ups, and yeah. Again, it's like all, all texture, all. Shape. And we used like the Hammond that was in the studio yeah. for this, which was that's right. A bit Hammond. of 
problematic instrument, but we made it work. It's very noisy and. So I remember you becoming Hammond Queen and yeah. uh, and <laughs> Rowan coming through at one point and going, well, maybe I could play Hammond. <laughs> no, just. No way. I remember that, yeah. Back in your room. Okay. I'd actually been Robot, taking... back in your room. I've actually <laughs> that... spent a lot of time on this Hammond, that's what you were saying. <laughs> no, it's because um, I had been taking lessons, you see. So I just felt like, <laughs> even though I was doing a bit of just just pull that one out, see what happens. <laughs> um, like you had the instinct, you had the... You had the... Yeah. I think it was just like, this is my moment. And the, ha the Hammond kind of envelopes so open as we go in and there's quite a yeah. big, um, a lot of, it's, yeah, it's a bit knackered, the actual Leslie and stuff on it, so yeah. we had to do a bit of playing around with it afterwards to mm. make it fit, but... But it gives it, it this really kind of grittiness. Yeah, yeah, no, I like it a lot. I like the sound of it a lot. Mm. And I think with this one, I remember Andy, like, again, we knew the, like, kind of shape we wanted it to be and I think maybe even the demo we did you know it was just like loads of layers that just yeah. built up into this like quite kind of all consuming sound it wasn't necessarily that we thought of Hammond organ but it was like when we were there like okay it's right there. these yeah, are the yeah. tools that we could make that that kind of atmosphere it's all about the chordal changes yeah and drones that yeah. we were doing anyway so it was just like yeah 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 trust the logical Genuine, genuine organ sound. And here we love synths, but I could just play this tune forever. Well, it's a very, yeah, play foreverable tune, really. And those small chord changes make such a big, big impact to it because it's simple. It's like a. quite a long time by that point but yeah. you yeah. only really start to notice it heavily there don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's the first time yeah. that like the root chord is like pronounced. Mm. So the whole mm. thing up to that point is just this like Sign. build of like not yeah. quite resolving, you know, and then it just Being lands, cold. but only for a moment, then it kind of unlands. Only for, yeah. Love that. Now we're back. Yeah, we had a lot of fun making this one, didn't we? And you can hear my raw fiddle on the same fourth. Lankham. Yeah, it is, yeah. Apart from no bag bagpipe train. Nice little megaphone fiddle sound there at the very end. Mm. <laughs> you haven't got any bagpipes on this album. Distinct lack. Yeah. Oh. oh! Yeah. Back in the land of trad. That's the traditional introduction to the Monen, which is a traditional salt bernie, bernie's dance. So it's the introduction, and then we just go into a tune I wrote called Orogen. And that's Rowan, caning it. <laughs> and that's me, Huntington, hitting it. You were hitting it and then spinning the stick around in the air. Yeah. <laughs> I like very, North West very rock and roll. Very <laughs> North West Morris dancing, yeah. I was thinking <laughs> more like Keith Moon from The Who or something, you know, on the jump. <laughs> well, it's actually to keep Rowan in time, but... <laughs> I do it on stage now. Yeah. <laughs> this is a very... 
very difficult one to count. It's just because I write tunes that are like, oh, this one's got nine. This happens nine times, and seven times, and five times, and everything's just asymmetrical. Irregular. It's not four times this, four times that, four times that, four times that. Mm. It's so irregular, so this one like keeps on your toes and you, the phrases change when you're not expecting it to. So we're back to the beginning now. But it just makes it an absolute really difficult one to count again. Okay. <laughs> Can be together on. It's got so many different parts. I'm diddling the mon M, you know, like the, the genuine traditional tune that I ripped off for this one. I'm knitting a, another sock. I've made one here. It's got carrots on it. And I'm making the other one. Of your low harmony on it's actually me isn't it it may be you different both of them and then my, my, just my when you were different. when you were talking about the um homemade sock there i was just mm. thinking about your um fashion line and your um yeah tom hanks dress and and that oh, was yeah. probably <laughs> that was probably one of the most emotional bits of the whole um week yeah. for me was um Sitting with you, Anna, and listening to um, Tom Hanks's Desert Island Discs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> do you oh yeah, having dinner. Having, having, having dinner. Having dinner. I listened to it twice in a row because I listened to it whilst yeah. we were cooking, and then and then we went, and then I was yeah. like, I've got to listen to the whole of this, and that was. Oh, we had fajitas. I think we we're having fajitas. Probably because that's the only thing I cook. Yeah. And like, yeah, no, I think you were on dinner. You made fajitas, and you, yeah, and I'd forgotten all about that. And Tom Hanks had a very interesting Desert Island disc, didn't he? And there's a moment where he he nearly cries in it, and it's very emotional, oh, hard, yeah. hard hitting drama and from while, the BBC. And while Anna was doing her Hammond session, I saw a little video, and you're wearing the, the, the dress that you made. <laughs> that I made. With <laughs> Tom Hanks's face on it. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> I'd forgotten about that. I'd forgotten all about it. I was in my Tom Hanks phase, wasn't I? Brother, you were so young When you learned to talk and be ignored When you learned to love and learned to run Brother, you were smiling in the photograph They took that day in January And the final house in Bogside, long after the paint's dry, the again. writing's yeah. on the wall Again, like, just Rachel doing very atmospheric work While with this track, I think. sit deciding, never feared a bullet Flying through the window What do we learn, oh? What do we learn? Little pocket piano coming in on that bit, it sounds mm. nice. Our sisters stood across the sea I think when we're 
made when we were making this again this song took a couple of years they to sort of stand you know, and become to fight on finished although i don't think the songs were ever really finished i remember like hearing lots of things going on but in the end i think we kept it all quite small yeah. didn't we in the street and just i think that's good i think i think there's a lot of space in it and steps that may that the main bit of this song is a question it feels right with space to consider it kind of in yeah if that makes sense i will after midnight in righteous color and you don't paint the town How we dance for to the floor before the cops came around. I remember having writing sessions for this one in yeah, our fronts. Oh. What residency. do we? It kind of, yeah, exactly. It came out. Of, we did a lot of like writing. Quite a lot of different angles. What do we learn? Yeah. yeah. Didn't we? What do yeah. we learn? This museum hall to see. Yeah, because in a way, like the other songs on this album, it's in I kind of. I kind of experience as quite painterly in their lyrics. It's a, like sort of image-based writing, a lot of in, up to the listener's interpretation. This one is like, I mean, I, when I'm writing songs, I don't tend to write very, very narrative songs. This is like, I really wanted to write about this very specific thing and almost like this specific man that we met at the Museum of Free Derry and his experience with his brother. But then I always want the song to have a lot more room in it than just that one story so this is a bit yeah like when we were making this track it was a real dance between those two things like really honoring this personal what do we link and like day and experience and inspiration but also really trying to find the universal in the song as well and actually interestingly i think the thing that i felt most confident on and before we did anything even the lyrics was um, the way it ends, this outro. I knew that it would be this song that would dig up hard stuff, and then out of this like, but I can hear it out of this slight tangle, would be this like one-time rendition of this old Donegal mazurka that we've been playing for a few years, and it would just come out of the mist almost like a kind of strong, solid, reliable, trustworthy, hopeful thing. And that's what I knew it would be before I had a lot of the lyrics. And there it is. And Rachel dancing beautifully around it. And that fiddle, you know, that, is that me playing? Yeah. Yeah, I'm playing that. But, you know, it's, it's again, again experimenting with the fiddle sound. So, you know, that, it's like a that sounds old. That sounds like a memory. It's exactly. just on yeah. the room mics, isn't it? I think on that. Is it? I think so. Yeah. And it sounds beautifully tinny because that's the right thing for it to be at that moment. <laughs> really straight back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's been my favourite. In the couple of gigs we've had, mm. that's been my favourite to realise that song. Yeah. yeah. We've had to work out different ways of doing it live. Yeah. Um, without Rachel, exactly. Yeah, you know, without the possibility of having Rachel. This is just our oh, nice. Ah, oh, this track. Yeah, this closing. Is the last track. I had this in my head actually. I think last night in my dream. With lyrics, actually. It's funny. I just. <laughs> I literally was dreaming about this song last night. goes back again to something well, like it's a got connection with Donegal actually yeah we were playing it we, were, we made a little video just a little Twitter video when we were there with the accidental cloud that came in when we were filming and my phone just fell over and then it just we didn't realise we just played the whole track and just <laughs> played this waltz a few times and then we watched it back I was like, oh no, my phone fell over. We watched it back and it was just this beautiful cloud <laughs> that came into the frame <laughs> just at the right point and went out again. It was great. This is 
is us kind of going back to like what is even in the more experimental stuff we do it's at the core of what we do this is an old dance tune and like sometimes these tunes don't need anything more from you than just to play them um but kind of echoing like yeah echoing kind of the atmosphere of it yeah i think just yeah just starting to hear the dancers feet yeah i went to record in the there's a lovely gathering of um people who like to do french and swedish dancing in sheffield um and i went to record them i think how do i think i might have sung a little bit of a waltz and then kind of faded out and then they would keep it going mm. so we had this I think we tried it on your your solo album as well. I can't even remember if we actually ended up with it on your solo. No, but I'm always trying to get dancing yeah. feet on my albums. And the difficulty is getting the timing ish, yeah. isn't it? But but I, yeah. love, I love how the, how actually when you it's almost like the the tom the tomber of the feet on the floor is a thing that's more important than whether yeah. they're all because they're not dancing to this. They're just here. Yeah, they're just dancing on their own. And then a little bit of chat and the sort of atmosphere of the mm -hmm. social context. No, I think that's a... It kind of puts the album out into the world like the end, doesn't it? Yeah. It's like it dances and there's chatter and it just becomes something that is um, beyond it. Yeah. And back to basics and mm. fiddle and banjo. Well, it's viola, but mm. viola and banjo. Anna right? plays yeah. more banjo on this album than I do. I do. Got more banjos as well. You've got now. way. Yeah, you've three banjos doing. now. Yeah. It's becoming, yeah. I need to keep an eye on that. You do, yeah. Before it gets out of hand. So it's very nice. Yeah, that's lovely. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. So it's out, really? everyone. Oh, yeah. What's um, the, um, who's it out with? What label's it out with? Yeah, on? it's out on Bendigedig, which is a small Welsh record label and just um, an incredibly hard working team. Um, Tamsin, Dilwyn Davis, and then, uh, yeah, some of the great people who have, like, yeah, it's been a proper team effort, this record. Mm. We've released, always released in a very, very small kind of DIY way before, and this has just felt like, you know, there's people telling us what to do. Yeah. It's really nice, actually. And they've got a vision that's very much like, you know, you'll see that this, you know, everyone will get these in the post when you've ordered them, but their, their kind of thing is to make one... Uh, really richly produced record per year so it's very very it's kind of a small scale operation um but i think that that's i don't know in this age of like i don't know music feeling quite like ephemeral or digital and just mm -hmm. kind of almost like throwaway. it feels really nice that they do it like like that and they really encouraged us to fill this book with the images of pierre olivier boulon the solarographs that we've based a lot of the Artwork on, and it's then our some... biggest packaged uh, CD. It's quite so extensive, far. isn't it? The sleep notes. Yeah. So yeah, really proud of that. And uh, yeah, Ben are an amazing team, and we felt super supported by them. So it feels nice. It's also kind of like I suppose it's sort of set. Um, yeah, like I mean, they're like very much in the folk scene, but they're also kind of it's it's for us. It's like a bit of a well, sort music. of slight shift into like the world music. I mean, I mean, they're discussion a, as well, even though that's they're part of art music productions, so it's um, which is very much a world music label. Yeah, um, so that feels nice. Yeah. Feels nice to just I don't know get get more people to hear it and share it wider. Feels nice. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, thanks to everyone who's been pre-ordering it and ordering it. Um, it's been very very nice to be packaging it off to. All over, actually, all over the world. That's been especially fun to do. And, um, yeah, we're going to try and get a few more done today if we've got our mm. energy and our signing hands here. Mm. Yeah.